Hi everybody, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. So first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have supported my channel and enjoy fossils as much as I do. Well, I got a few requests from people who want to see prepping, want to see not only finding the fossils, but actually how do we fix them up? How do we prepare them? How do we preserve them for the future? So in this episode, I'm going to show you the preparation of a really nice trilobite. One of those giant Isotelus gigas trilobites that we found in the fossils along the Mohawk film. Really unusual trilobites and very fragile as well. So now what I'm going to do is show you the preparation of this fossil from start to finish. Enjoy. So right now what I'm doing is just trying to, this trilobite is extremely fragile. A lot of the people, a lot of the pieces are in place. Some not quite so much, but the ones that are in place and easy to identify where they belong, what I'm doing is just putting a little glue onto them before they don't wander. And the other pieces, like I have a piece down here, not ex I think it goes along here somewhere, but not exactly sure how yet. So the pieces that are obvious where they go, I'm taking care of right now. Sometimes it's just a matter of glue in place before they go anywhere, which is what I'm trying to take care of here. A couple of little pieces right here. Don't know exactly how they fit in yet, but the pieces where it was obvious where they go, I was able to put them in. And the rest of this is going to take a little bit more work and uh, a little more puzzling to get it all done right. Thank you. As I'm preparing this, just noticing there is a cephalopod underneath this. Interesting. Just happens to be on this isotelus that I'm very carefully restoring. So here's what I've done. I put back all the pieces of shell that I could put back with confidence. There's a couple little pieces that I'm not sure exactly where they go and rather than misplace them, we have a couple of empty spots where shell is missing. But for the most part, the shell is back on this Isotelus gigas. So now what I'm going to do, I also noticed that there is a cephalopod kind of running underneath it. So I'm going to keep that as well when I go ahead and cut it out from this much larger piece of rock. What I'm going to do is first mark off what I want to keep. Now, over here, obviously I'm going to want to keep the cephalopod that's here. Like that maybe. I'm going to give the trilobite plenty of room to prevent cracking. There is a crack over here. Hopefully that's not So I think minimally, a little bit less. Minimally, that's what I'm going to want to keep. After this completely dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it. I'm going to take some plastic or maybe even some toilet paper and cover up the softer parts of the trilobite, then tape down some paper or plastic over it so that this way water and um, and dirt obviously doesn't recover the trilobite when I cut it. So that's one half. So 
Now, on the other half, there is some shell kind of embedded into the rock here. And somebody more expert than I might want to pull those out and try and put them all on one side. But I think if I try to do that, I'll just crumble it into nothing. So what I'm gonna do is just preserve as is. I've cleaned it up as much as I think I should. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little coating on it to protect it. Uh, if I ever decide to pursue this further, well, that coating might actually help it hold together better. And it's also removable with a little bit of acetone. So let's see what I can do with this. Ran into an unexpected problem as I was painting on the very long clear coat to the other half. It actually ate through the plastic cup. So got through the total first one, first half, and most of this half before that happened. So I just decided to pull out another plastic cup and it will probably eat through that too. But I'll be able to get this done first. Mm -hmm. All right, trying to paint this on. Moving the shell. I'll turn it as minimally as possible. I think that piece was up there. I'm trying to keep everything in place because I don't want to distort the trilobite. Just want to preserve it as, whoops, that came out again. Back over there. There we go. I want to preserve this as best as possible in its natural state or so this actually came out pretty well looks like I'm going to be able to get this done before I melt another cup So this will help keep this very fragile stuff in place. As I saw the much larger block down. Want to try and protect the actual fossil as authentically as possible. I think that's, that looks pretty good. I don't think I missed any of the actual animal. Maybe a little bit right there. I think that looks pretty good. So, what I'm gonna do now, I think the part where the cephalopod is on the other side flaked off so that's gone but that's okay what I'm going to do now is prepare this to be sawed out just like I did with the other one and very carefully try to do this all right just checking the other half want to make sure I do this fairly similar one side and the other This looks like a weaker piece of rock. So I might actually just leave it, give it a little bit more, make it a little bit sturdier, maybe more, maybe not. We'll see. All right. So next step is gonna to be to tape over, once these dry completely, cover up the parts that I don't want any dirt and stuff to get into and get ready to saw it. All right, so note that the fossil now is shrouded in a lump of toilet paper to protect it. And now I am just gently taping down with some kind of low quality tape here. The plastic and this is just to protect the fossil. I'm actually going to cut through the plastic because that doesn't really matter. Cut through the, the tape, but this will protect the fossil 
as I saw it. All right, I'm about ready to make the cut now. I'm gonna be putting on a mask as well. Um, in addition to safety goggles over my glasses to be safe as possible, I'm actually gonna be cutting right through the plastic. Now this crack that we already saw before does, this layer does go somewhat underneath at least part of the part I want to keep. So I'm doing this part first. I'm gonna do it very carefully and slowly to try and not damage the fossil. Then I can work on cutting across maybe that way and then finally this way. Now you can see there actually was a drop down when it hit the part that was already cracked. And that may, looks like it isn't going to be too much. So hopefully we do have an intact fossil under there. We'll know for certain until it's all done. So far, so good. One final cut to make. At which time we'll know whether our work has paid off. Plastic has come off. Hopefully it's not too dirty underneath there. We will take a look in a moment. Okay, so it feels like the rock has stayed intact, even though there was a crack going through it. The plastic came off on the last cut. Couldn't really do much about that. Let's see how the fossil turned out. Well, a lot of water did get in. Before I even pull off that paper, I'm gonna get the water out. Yeah, the rock is filthy again, unfortunately, but I'm hoping that the, the fossil stayed clean. So fortunate that that crack under cutting this over here didn't come apart. I do a little bit of gentle cutting to do that. So let's take a look. And there it is. Hopefully when this rock dries, it will be beautiful. There's a couple of minor things that have to be done after it dries. There's a couple of places where the uh, preservative 
overflowed a little bit, but I can easily scrape that off. And this will be a really beautiful Isotelus fossil. Now to do the negative or the other half. Now that it's fully dry, gonna be doing the same thing with the other side. Gonna be putting down some TP just to try and keep water out when I saw it. Cut the boundaries that I wanna keep. This piece is much thinner than the other. It's gonna cut easy, but it also has a high risk of breaking. So I have to be very, very careful with this. And I'll go ahead and tape up some plastic over it, just like the other, to try and keep water out as I am sawing. Here we go. Have the other piece set up now to go ahead and cut. Plastic and paper over the fossil. Hopefully this will go good. Just like before, we have the unveiling of the other half. I'm pretty sure it stayed together. Like it stayed mostly dry in the important spot. Should have had this tissue ahead, ready ahead of time. Okay, and there's the fossil, a little bit wet, but I'm thinking no worse for wear. All right, so these are cut. These are ready for fine preparation. There's one more thing I'm gonna do though, while they're outside. When these are completely dry, and I can tell they're not yet because there's still water seeping into the cracks in the rock, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to not spray any more or coat any more on the trilobite, but I am going to spray clear coat on the entire back. And the reason for this, I know this is a weak spot. I know it has a crack in there. And what I want to do is make give it the most chance of surviving with the least amount of uh, protection. So what I'm going to do is just turn this over when it's all ready to do so and spray the entire back with clear coat to help give it just a little more support, make it a little bit less likely of chipping or breaking. And this will also make it less likely to scratch any shelves or glass, whatever I decide to display this on.
Now I'm just going to let them dry. Now the backs are clean, let them dry for about an hour. Oh, one thing I didn't point out, on the back of this, you might remember, there's actually another trilobite. This was kind of a poorly preserved one, but on the back of this really big, beautiful trilobite. So I'm going to give this about at least an hour to dry, put this on really thick, because I want this to be well protected. So ladies and gents, here is the finished product. Here is that fully prepped out now trilobite, the isotelus. You have the cephalon on the head. You have some of the thorax kind of going down towards it. And the tail of the pididium is offset by a little bit. And it is, uh, and here is the negative with a matching half of it over here. So I managed to do a pretty good job restoring this trilobite. I am very, very happy with it. And so this is what I found along the Mohawk River. Thank you so much to the subscribers of my channel who came up with the suggestion to show some prepping of these fossils. I will make that a part of the things that I produce for you. And as always, I'm going to ask if you like these videos, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. This will help me keep making more videos like these. Thank you so much and happy fossil hunting and collecting. This is probably going to be the find of the day. That is really beautiful. Jane, <laughs> 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 I'm kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing a puddle like that.